well 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 good students lesson number two uh for those who've been following previously we have talked about uh the danger of a single story by chimama dangozi adichia this time around with me is the text anthology passage to africa by george alagia straight into it we're going to look at the background and context first what kind of exam style question are you expected or are you expected and any model or sample response uh, without wasting time as i had said earlier uh, is that georgia lagia the writer was born in a place called sri lanka but when he was five years old his family moved to live in west africa he now lives in the united kingdom and works as a newscaster for the bbc this passage comes from uh, his book titled a passage to africa in this autobiography he writes about his life and experiences as a tv reporter working mainly across africa in this extract he writes about a report that he made when he was covering the civil war in somalia for the bbc Uh, student, uh, hoping that you've read the text, let's jump into uh, the first aspect there, understanding the text. And in this case, George Alagia's purpose is to explain his role as a reporter, giving his thoughts and feelings about a particularly uh, challenging incident. He is also trying to challenge us as readers to make us think about our role. What kind of an exam style question are you expected? Here's an example. How does the writer use language and structure to create a sense of atmosphere? You should support your answer with close reference to the passage, including brief quotations. This is usually question number four. It is usually awarded 12 marks. Successful completion of the question uh, allows you to pocket your 12 good marks in this case. Now, uh, uh, and there is one thing I want to note here. Each and every time that uh, you are going to sit for paper one, there's one thing which is common with the kind of questions that you're going to uh, face. There is the question that would like you to uh, highlight or identify the use of language and use of language and any structure that different writers have used to create different purposes and intentions uh, in their text. So to be very precise, students, you need to master or you need to be able to, be able to identify any use of language whenever you read a text and uh, and structure to create different uh, scenarios that the writers uh, want to convey these are sample answers part of this question up here a sense of atmosphere a sense of atmosphere the surrounding we go in the opening sentence the writer moves from the general nature of the people that he meets to the specific and the reference and i quote the one i will never forget this statement alone hooks the reader now in your answers students hooking the reader is the effect of this particular statement the one that i never forget which means that you've successfully uh, highlighted the point there the evidence and its effect there's also the use of number a thousand that i've quoted there it tells the reader how widespread uh, the suffering is that the writer has witnessed there is also the use of tricolon of negative adjectives and i quote lean scared and betrayed it emphasizes realization of the people suffering in stating how and i quote what might have appealed us when we had started our trip no longer impressed us much in this case the writer shows how he has become desensitized to what he observes it's like when they had started they were they were hopeful they, they were excited that, that the whole trip is going to be exciting but then the incidences and the and the events they came across never impressed them anymore the fact that some of the people are named because in the text if you've read it students uh there is a habiba abdraman has been mentioned ayana has been mentioned amina abdraman the mother uh, wha why would the writer uh, specifically uh, name the, the characters, give them specific names, particular names? This, it personalizes the account and creates a connection between the writer and the subject. 
Uh, having said that successfully, the fact that Amina is searching for, I quote, wild edible roots, it draws the attention to the lack of food and the description of the dirt flow of their heart shows the family's poverty. The letter supplies Amina's daughter's names and ages, which highlights the shocking fact that young children are affected by the famine. The brevity and the bluntness of a three-word sentence, that is, Habiba had died, conveys how this event was common in the place and seems to imply a lack of sensitivity. The reference to the sense of smell, and I quote, decaying flesh, putrid air, and also sense of touch in, I quote, wipe your hands after you've held the clammy palm of a mother who has just cleaned vomit, reveals the horror and distaste that the writer feels. He is brutally honest about his re reactions, which include revulsion. To the people that he sees, and in so doing, he admits he's breaking a taboo, and a taboo is in quote. The writer describes in powerful detail the, the people's physical suffering, and I quote, festering wound, struggling breath, the degeneration of uh, the human body, excretion of fluids, vomit, shriveled body. He also describes the pity that he feels when he observes how the people aspire, how the people aspire to a dignity that it is almost impossible to achieve. The brevity of his encounter with the man who smiled is emphasized through uh, the reference or to time and I quote a few seconds and of quote and another aspect of time there a fleeting meeting which means it was a quick encounter just a flashy encounter and further enhanced by the rhyme in the second phrase the frequent repetition of the word smile there and face shows the impact that his that this unexpected gesture from an unknown man has on the writer the use of rhetorical questions and I quote, how could it be? What was it about that smile? Conveys how intrigued the writer is. The, sen the sentence structuring with normally and accustomed at the start of clauses gives added weight to how the writer's unsettled reaction to the smiling man is unique. The connection with the man causes the writer to question his relationship with his subjects. And the listing in between me and him, between us and him, between the rich world and the poor world, draws in the readers as well. The paragraph ends with the writer contrasting the embarrassment of the weekend man with his strong and confident stance and asking himself what he should be feeling. In the penultimate paragraph, that is the fifth paragraph, he decides to, to report the suffering in Gavgadud with all the power and promise that he could master. The alliteration lending force to his resolving. And in the final paragraph, the writer talks, to, talks of his one regret of not finding out the man's name and tells of how the encounter was a seminal moment for him. His final sentence is a direct address to the nameless friend, the noun expressing a degree of closeness, and the final clause, and I quote, I owe you one, with its colloquial phrasing expresses gratitude and a recognition of the influence that the man unwittingly had over the writer. By the end of the passage, the writer's attitude to those he observes has undergone a huge change and he has learned some humility. Good students, this marks the end of uh, Passage to Africa, that is the second anthology in your coursework. But I would prefer that the best way to go about this one is you pause in each, uh, in, in, in each of, I mean, you pause whenever you feel like there is a point that you need to go through. And most importantly, have a notebook and a place to write and you can also mimic, you can copy exactly and try to exonerate and look for most important aspects because this is comprehensively covers 
all the language use and the the structure that the writer George Alagia has used in the, in his work, especially to be more precise in this uh, short anthology that we've read here, Passage to Africa. And above all, I wish you the very, very best. Adios. <laughs>